stories for the next hour. And you can almost smell the gammon tonight <laughs> because I'm joined by Leo Kurz. <laughs> there he is, old gammony. <laughs> and Paul Cox, famously the people's gammon. Absolutely. Good evening, one of the old rashers. How are you doing, lads? Oh, I see you've got your little catchphrases in there already. <laughs> We're just a vehicle for you now, aren't we? Paul? I don't know what's happening. Just a Genuinely, Nick, vehicle. I don't know what's happening. But uh, I'm, I'm quite happy to go and run with it, mate. You followed some bad examples. How's it going, Leo? You're yeah, right. not bad. How's your show going? The show I do on Saturdays yeah. at 8 p.m. Uh, yeah, it's good. It'd be nice, nice if uh, everybody could tune in and watch it. 8 p.m. on Saturdays. It's called the Saturday Night Showdown, and I'm on it. Okay, cool. Bit of a plug. Why are you watching GB? We plug other GB news shows. <laughs> All right, let's have a quick look at the front pages then. So the Times has Russell Group gets most of its fees from overseas. The Telegraph, China and Russia behind slurs on Princess. The Guardian suspects to appear in court accused of Moscow attack that left 137 dead. The Sun has China hack attack on UK. The iNews has UK's nuclear defence boost to protect against Putin. And finally, the Daily Star. The Daily Star joins the gold rush. No idea what that's about. And those were the front pages. <laughs> So, Leo, let's kick off with the front of the Telegraph. So, according to the government, China and Russia are spreading slurs against the Princess of Wales. Senior government figures fear that hostile states are behind the spread of wild conspiracy theories and online rumours surrounding the Princess's health. I mean, I know at least some of these wild conspiracy theories have come from my mates, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, apparently China and Russia are doing it as well to destabilise British society. I mean, unfortunately for China and Russia, we don't have a society in Britain anymore. We just have a banal economic platform that people can come and leave uh, as they choose and treat how they want. Uh, but yeah, apparently there's, there's proof of bots. Uh, they said, um, they said an, an analysis of accounts uh, together that created a Meghan Markle Twitter community found over 1,000 highly connected uh, accounts that had tweeted more than two and a half million times over a six-month period. So that's, uh, that's related to Meghan Markle. But we're seeing, you know, this, this is the sort of the weaponization. They've got um, server farms and warehouses in Russia with just people plugging away all day sending tweets about Kate, which sounds, sounds like the ideal job for, for some people, to be honest. It's kind of amazing that there's someone sat in a warehouse in China going, the ring disappears at 1 minute 19. You yeah, know, yeah. Like, get a life, guys. I mean, there has been, like you say, like you imply, enough of a mm -hmm. domestic spreading of conspiracy theories completely organically. I've been amazed. I was on my podcast saying, guys, she's probably just ill. Can yeah. we stop doing this? Because my health anxiety kicked in. I'm like, it's probably just illness. And yeah, I was absolutely yeah. right. And everyone else is going, oh, mm. it's an affair and all this awful stuff. I think it has been pretty awful. What do you think, Paul? Well, this is what the... F the Cold War looks like in 2024, isn't it? We are in a Cold War now. There's no two ways about it. Much the same we were up until about the very early 90s, until Gorbachev got in, in, into power. We are in it now. It's China, Iran and Russia versus the West. And this is an ideal way to affect the way we communicate, because they know we're obsessed with this stuff. It's mm. very easy. I mean, the, the interesting thing is, you're absolutely right, we're doing enough of our own sort of domestic uh, Cold War type stuff. And we know this because like, I've, I've heard Leo be accused of being part of the Illuminati. I've spent a lot of time, <laughs> I've spent a lot of time with Leo. I don't think he is, OK? <laughs> he might well be, but he's hiding it really well if he is. So we know that this, you know, we know how what easily rumours get spread, even when we know they're not true. But we get suckered in by it. That's why people like Russia... Yeah. I'm really worried on this one that I'm the normie. I'm the one going, yeah. oh, that is Kate. That's yeah. obviously a video, Kate. Well, guys, what's wrong with you? Yeah. I, I mean, I'm the normie, and I like, I'm, a, I'm an anti, you know, no pure blood, no vaccine, think 2020 election was rigged, and then Michelle Obama's a man, and I'm the normie. What's happening? <laughs> it's ridiculous. Um, but do you think, Leo, that this is, there's anything in this? Is it, is it a bit like the Russia, 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 or the Cambridge Analytica? Analytica. To Analytica, that's another <laughs> Analytica just gets into yeah. Everywhere. But, like, <laughs> is it, like, actually just a small amount of impact? Because those things I, I thought they were massively overblown all that all that stuff yeah no i mean uh, i think i think china and russia definitely do do this and all kinds of nefarious uh, nefarious stuff on the, on the web but i think governments in the west could use this as an excuse to shut down social media we've already seen uh, spain has announced that it's going to shut down telegram which is by far the most fun social media to be on because there's, there's absolutely no rules whatsoever uh, and they're, they're going to use fact checkers to, to silence and delist uh, you know accounts that, that don't uh, don't say the right thing but the problem with that is you know if they use Ver BBC Verify. BBC Verify can't even verify their own no. sources. Yeah, yeah. They used an Iranian-funded source. It'll be a nightmare if Telegram shuts down because that's where you get all your 
information about yeah, weapons. We... <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, let's have a quick look at the front page of the Times, then, Paul. Yes, and Russell Group gets most of its fees from overseas. So this is UK universities. The Russell Group is sort of the top universities within the UK. And it's, it's reported here that a large percentage of their income now comes from overseas students. And it's, you know, it's having, of course, an effect because we're, ha you know, this, do, do, how do we look at this, you know, because ever since Tony Blair said everybody should go to university and that's the measure of success, everybody has gone to university and they've crippled the country with debt, given them endless degrees about socialism or tourism and all the other isms that are no use to anybody else was history, whatsoever. History of tampons. History of tampons, that was a good one, to be fair. I got quite uh, into that. Um, <laughs> But I, I really can't figure out whether this is a good or bad. <laughs> it was worth it, wasn't it? I had a go at uh, a joke. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll clip that bit later for your, yeah. your social media. Um, uh, but uh, I can't figure out whether this is a good or bad thing. We've, we've created this industry now that we need to prop up with foreign money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, look, foreign students are up 50% in five years. Uh, domestic students, on UK students, they lose 2,500 a year. We'll be 5,000 by the end of the decade. It's all yeah. a big scam, isn't it, Leo? Yeah, and also the incentive, this will push on the, the universities to not provide places for, for Scottish students, uh, for, for British students. Because this is already happening in, in Scotland, you know, where they say, oh, we're going to give Scottish people free university places because they can't fund enough places. There's, there's Scottish people who want to go to university that should be going to university that can't go. Uh, so, yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. Ridiculous. OK. Well, that's the serious newspapers done. What about The Guardian, Leo? The Guardian has a uh, suspect appear in court accused of Moscow attack that left 137 people dead. You can see one of them there is um, there's a bandage over his ear. He had it cut off and was made to eat it uh, because the, the police in Russia uh, are, are qu aren't quite as tightly regulated as the police uh, <laughs> over here. The, the Russian press, you know, you can imagine The Guardian would be like, oh, my God, the police made him eat his ear. Oh, my God, this is terrible. Why is nobody just... just in, like diversity is a strength. Uh, so yeah, you can see the other guy has obviously had a had a bad night. I've seen uh, footage of him with electrodes on his testicles, which unfortunately we can't we can't show. But um, but yeah, so this is and also I mean this this is a, the whole thing's been been absolutely crazy. So Putin's come out and said, oh, it's definitely Ukraine, even though Islamic State themselves have released videos, released photos proving that it was them, and like you know saying yeah, it's def definitely us. They must be absolutely furious. They, they can't even curious. get credit. They can't get screenwriting credit on their own production. Yeah, and just for balance, can I just say I'm on the side of whoever's cutting people's ears off and putting electrodes on their testicles. Like, <laughs> they're my guys. I agree with them. I just, I just like their policies. I just like who they are. You're um, part of the testicle guys, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I'm the non-cutting ear off side. Go on, go on, Paul. Well, I mean, it's very revealing from Putin, isn't it? The guy's a psychopath. Uh, he has to be because great guy. Great guy. I mean, th this is why we love him here. But the guy has to be a psychopath. He's t this is 133 dead. By the way, if this had happened in in our country or in the US or somewhere like that, there would have been a methodical, slow process of identifying. We wouldn't have known too much. It would have gone on in the background. Putin, within about 15 minutes of this, managed to get hold of the guys and also find out they no, were on their way back to Ukraine. No, it, took, it took way more, way longer than that, and they weren't going back to Ukraine. No, they could they one. They weren't. They, like, they, it, it, I can't believe those guys, everybody's like, why didn't they die if they're jihadists? Because nobody shot them, because the Russian security services are terrible, and probably most of the Russian security services are in Ukraine, <laughs> trying to shoot Ukrainian men for some reason. It's, it's ridiculous. They're fleeing to Ukraine because it's the closest border. Obviously, they wanted to get out of Russia, but some of the stuff that's been going around, there's a picture of Sam Hyde, the American comedian, that's been uh, going around. Somebody photoshopped it onto a, a, a Ukrainian passport. People, there it is there. People have been saying, oh, look, this proves, this proves that, you know, it, it was, it was Ukraine. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Canadian. That's obviously right. fake. That's so fake it couldn't even be any... Like, you can't make it more hilariously fake than having a comedian on it. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right, I'll start. It's funny. All right, let's do the mirror in, like, minus one minute. OK, <laughs> pubs call time at 8pm. This is basically a story, Nick, about pubs. Uh, they've got so few customers now, they're actually calling time at 8pm. So we're not, we're, this is a sad story. We, we, we don't use our pubs enough. It's basically really Zoomers don't. aren't drinking, is that right? Well, That's can we, it. Can we convert them to mosques or have, like, you know, half the pub as a mosque? Yeah, great idea. Progressive. Thanks, Leo. <laughs> All right, that is it for part one. But coming up, Chinese spies just stop oil. And Shemima Begum sounds like my dream dinner party. See you in a minute. <laughs> Dubes & Co. Weekdays from 6pm.
You think this country needs new gas power stations. Apparently, this will all be about trying to get some form of energy security. Rishi Sunak has upset people today with this suggestion, people saying that actually this would do more damage to climate change uh, than it would do good. Where are you on it, Richard? Uh, I'll tell you exactly where. We need a lot more gas power stations and nuclear power stations because quite often the wind doesn't blow and the sun doesn't shine. Last week, we imported 16% of all our electricity because we haven't got enough capacity in the UK and we're now totally over-reliant on renewables. Um, the part of the problem is the lack of storage capacity, which mm. the government has finally got round to addressing. I think this as backup is actually quite a sensible idea. But they are not doing anything, as far as I can tell. At the moment, it will be retrofitted to have storage capability, which seems to be utterly bonkers. I mean, anyone who's got solar panels, um, you know, you know very well you're storing up energy. So it's about storage as much as production. And they could have gone, you know, 20 years ago, we could have had nuclear power. You know, we, we could have done more. We haven't looked far enough ahead in the future, and we are in grave danger of making the same mistake. I mean, the other side of this, is what is the difference going to be? Blackouts are, you know, they're irritating and... Irritating? It'd be disastrous if well, it would destroy our now. economy. Well, they would be now, but, you know, um, some of us remember three-day weeks and things like that. And, in fact, you know, I grew up thinking that everybody had, you know, at least a couple of days a week when they had to eat off a primer stove and things. This is, again, I don't want to harp on, but this is one of the problems in the politics in our country, isn't it? So many politicians, they just think in election cycles, Absolutely. they just think, what can I do and yeah. say to get my own backside re-elected uh, at the next general election? They're not always looking ahead. Uh, actually, politics aside, what is genuinely the best thing for this country? I think the most exciting bit for me is talking to people. People who I think are ignored often by the major news channels, we're going to give news they want to hear. There's a voice there that needs to be heard. I think there's a chance here for a diversity of opinion to be expressed, which you don't find elsewhere. It's really exciting. We don't hold back. We're free to say how decisions that are taken here affect us all around the country. Only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Michelle Jubery, and I'm not here to tell you what to think. I'd much rather hear what you have to say. So, send in your opinions to gbviews at gbnews.com. Keep them clean, and you never know, I might read them out. With my panel here on Jubes & Co, we debate, we get stuck into the issues of the day on a show where all views are welcome, especially yours. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Welcome back to Headliners. I'm Nick Dixon, still here with the Gamini combo of Leo <laughs> Kirst. There he is. And Paulie Cox. Hey, yeah. I just came up with, with Paulie knowing everyone told you that. I don't know why. I regret it. Well, Let's see the sun. And uh, pro Palestine protesters have teamed up with Just Stop Oil. Maybe they could form a new group called Just Stop Israel, Paul. Oh, as the Scots would say, Jeans Cribbins help me boo up. Uh, well, they, I literally <laughs> never said that. <laughs> oh, they do. I know at least one of them that does. Uh, pro Palestine protesters and eco zealots join forces to surround British Museum as tourists bar from entering. Well, it is the weekend, Nick, and we know what happens at the weekend, don't we? The protesters come out and they protest. But what they've, they've collaborated now and become this supernova of idiots. Basically, <laughs> I can't think of any other... They, nice. this, is, this is what we've got now, haven't we? They, they, they can't make enough trouble on their own because we're all ignoring them now. So they've come together like, we've got to do something. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to stop tourists getting into the British Museum. Mm -hmm. So, basically, the people that are paid to come to this country and do those sort of things have missed out. The rest of us... Yeah. Couldn't care less. It's a yeah. kind of super group, isn't it? It's like when Sting came together with Rod Stewart and Brian Adams for the All for Love, 1993. Yeah. It's much like that. But I don't. it's bad optics for Palestine, isn't it, for the Palestine cause? Because, <laughs> let's be honest, if we looked at it dispassionately, their cause is kind of winning in the court of public opinion, whether you like it or not. Yeah. And, and this is not going to help them, because, especially because what can we really do in Britain anyway, domestically? It doesn't really make any sense. So I think this is actually bad for them, because everyone hates Just Stop Oil, yeah. whereas Palestine has a lot of sympathy at the moment in the world. Yeah, I'm not sure that uh, everybody has a lot of sympathy for the the, the anti-Israel pr protesters. I know. Uh, I don't. And also, it just shows that you know both uh, both organisations.
organisations have lost all focus of what their, what their core issue is. I mean, Hamas are not a low-carbon organisation. They are an mm. organisation revolved around using weapons and, and, you know, all kinds of wheeled vehicles and burning diesel and yeah. things like that. And that's the worst thing people. about them, isn't it? Yes. I, <laughs> well, net zero. <laughs> well, you could. I mean, if you're just stop oil, I mean, it's, it's all, it's all uh, ideologically motivated. Just stop oil should, should love any military action because it re reduces uh, people's carbon footprint Good to point. zero. Uh, but also, it, it just shows, you know, just stop oil, you know for a fact they'll be in favour of uh, open borders when, uh, if you bring somebody into the UK from somewhere like Sierra Leone, their carbon footprint goes up exponentially, goes up like 150 times. So they're obviously not actually motivated by reducing no. carbon. They're motivated by something else. And I think it's spreading yeah. communism. Yeah, and you make a good point, actually, that the Palestine protesters are kind of hated because they disrupt things in London. But Palestine itself, I'm just objectively looking at it, I'm not saying my view, seems to be kind of winning the battle of public opinion versus Israel at the moment. Or it's close. I, but, oh. I think in, in the sort of noisy young people who are on social media a lot, it's, it's, it's sort of winning. But I, th I think in the sort of, you know, sensible majority, we're, we're still sort of, you know, uh, in favour of civilization. OK, well, there's a funny little extra detail that Just Stop Oil are pushing their new youth demand strategy after admitting they're too white and middle class. And guess who's working on that? It's Olive. Let's do the mirror. And Jemima Begum is back in the news again. I think I need to call her PR agent, Liz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so, notorious ISIS bride, that's, uh, that's the mirror's word, not, not mine. I, I don't think she's notorious at all. I think she's lovely. Uh, ISIS bride Shemima Begum is just one of 19 British women being held at a detention camp in Syria, it's been reported. According to the Mail on Sunday, the Al Raj camp for ISIS women and children is currently home to 19 British females and 35 of their children. Mm. It's the first time a definite figure has emerged from the camps, and they provide access to secular education, but they've found that many of the mothers are still trying to indoctrinate their youngsters into extremist ideologists, and they also want to return back to the UK with those youngsters that they've indoctrinated into extremist ideologists which sounds, hey, fantastic. I mean, we've, hey, we've all got 40,000 Islamists on watch lists in the UK. We can, we can add a few more hundred thousand to that. What's, what's the problem with that? Uh, but anyway, this, this woman, uh, Wajda Rashid from Leeds, uh, admit now she, she regrets having left the UK for Syria with her husband who took up arms with the insurgents in 2015. Yet now that they lost, I bet if ISIS <laughs> won, she'd be delighted in her big mansion. Right, right. Yeah, it's amazing these, this Shamima Begum stuff just runs and runs. And she looks amazing. In the, in the article, yeah. like, she was looking incredible, like designer sunglasses, She's like looks maxing, it's called on YouTube. But also, who's funding her, I always think. She's got this designer clothes, and you know, she gets a BBC podcast series. Someone seems to want to push the Shemima agenda. Yeah. But, and this isn't even a real story. This is a bit of a non-story. It's kind of just an update on how Shemima's getting on. It's like a reality show with Shemima well, Begum. But we know it's an issue. It's a huge issue. We know it's an issue because this is the Mirror reporting this. I don't know if you accidentally reported that these Islamist extremists that have come from Britain and, and been taught how to do so somewhere else are out there and waiting to come back. But that's exactly what this story does for me. And this is in the Mirror. So the Mirror here, who are definitely part Part of the gang that are buying the designer glasses for someone like um, Begum to, to dress up in, to look as westernised as possible, to ingratiate herself back in. My, my opinion on her always sways. I'm never, I'm never too sure whether she should be kicked out because she was a British citizen and therefore we have some sort of, we're duty bound. However, once you go out of the country and you're against the country, are you, uh, do you renege on that citizenship? I really don't know where I stand on this. But at the end of the day, if there's 19, 19 women and 35 kids and they're going to have 35 kids and they're going to have 35 kids. We've got a huge problem coming our way if we just open the gate up. Yeah. And also, yeah. how come we can ban Shamima Begum, who's born in Britain, but we can't ban the people who weren't born in Britain that are coming across illegally? I don't understand. Like, you know, if they're not allowed in, you know, what is a ban? Can't Shamima just well, get on something that floats and come here anyway? Good point. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, when you say the mirror, they're not literally funding Shamima Begum, just so we can clear it up <laughs> for any kind of talk. <laughs> you, know, we're all, you know, we're always in trouble these days. Yeah, sorry. We don't know, we don't know who bought the sunglasses. No, they're, they're not. They're they're not doing well enough to fund Good to buy point. a pair of sunglasses. Know they look cool. And pay to say <laughs> silly things. Yes, hysterical content. Let's do the Times. <laughs> and job centres will partner with the NHS to get the sick back to work. This is genius, putting two of the country's worst performing institutions together. Yeah. Maybe it's like times in two minus numbers, Paul. Another supernova of idiots. Uh, <laughs> job centres will partner with NHS to get sick back to work, Labour says. So this is Les, Liz Kendall. And she said reducing the 9.3 million long-term uh, economically inactive adults would be critical for a Starmer government. It's critical for any government, to be honest. But uh, it says down here that long-term sickness has increased by 
like 700,000 since the pandemic. I know this statistic because I see the news cycle a lot. That 700,000 people didn't start as a result of the pandemic. It was enhanced by that. It started in 2019, a significant number of that. So they're using a statistic to make a point here, and they're using it in incorrectly, I believe. One thing I would say, though, is... This is the last thing the NHS needs. It's, it's entirely... I don't know if it's underfunded. To say the NHS is underfunded is... It, I, don't, I think it's a bit of a misnomer. It's probably got more money than it ever needs. It's just the money is used terribly. And the last thing they need is a, another thing to do on that list. Yeah, OK. It's a terrible system, the job centre system. The people working there often not the best qualified themselves, kind of disinterested. The whole place is a nightmare. She said she wants... Liz Kendall said she wants to make it no longer a place of fear, but I don't know how they're going to do that. No-one's managed to do it yet. But maybe Labour will get tougher on all this kind of thing than the Tories because they can politically get away with a lot more when it comes to things like the NHS and getting people back to work and so on. What do you think? Yeah, we're certainly hearing those noises from uh, from Keir Starmer. But, I mean, the, 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 the reality is that, you know, for a few years we had this thing called austerity, which wasn't austerity at all. We're still being taxed to the hill and the government was splurging loads of money on completely pointless stuff. But for a few years, you know, they were checking people's applications. Now they don't. Uh, you know, now that austerity's ended, this is why... This is why uh, there's been this huge rise in people on long-term sick because it's so easy to do. You can just get signed off by your doctor and then, you know, get signed off by your work and, and then get all these benefits. And so why would people work? I know people in Scotland, people I went to school with, who see the benefit system as a career that to, be, to be worked, to be gamed. You know, you get yourself diagnosed with whatever. You, you know, you take your kids around the doctors until you can get them diagnosed with whatever to get extra, extra stuff. And we've got an incredibly benef uh, generous benefit system. Um, we need to we need to slash it. Afuera! We need to. <laughs> do you think they'll get actually will get top of labor or will they just spend those money like they always do? What do we think? I think they will have to in order to achieve I, I, I think that I think the Tories just don't know how to Tory anymore. So all they have to come in is they just have to come in and be slightly Tory. Yeah. And, you know, they could make a lot of people happy. They could go that route because they've got the civil service actually on their side. You know, Starmer could come in and just be very tough on a number yeah. of things. And, you know, oh, you, yeah, yeah. Or he could, could go ultra-woke and destroy the country. Let's see. <laughs> Let's have a look at the Times. And China has been accused of a malign attack on our electoral commission. Kind of begs the question, is there such a thing as a benign attack, Leo? But anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so this is China. Uh, ministers will accuse China of a malign attack on Britain's democratic institutions after it accessed the personal details of 40 million voters. Voters in a hack on the election watchdog, which you should imagine is every voter, pretty much in the in the UK. Uh, so this cyber attack uh, happened in August 2021, but wasn't identified until October 2022. So I guess that gave them time to, you know, extract all the. I don't even know, you know, the full details. What data they've got? They'll, they'll have data on me. I'm a I'm a registered voter, so you know, I, I, but I don't know what how much information that is. Just Can they, they do don't anything? have who, who you voted for. That's the main thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I voted for the Xi Jinping. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, actually, it's probably the best option on the ballot, right? <laughs> yeah, sure, you get stuff done. But people are saying, oh, this is China, they're doing this malign attack. We know that countries hack each other for all kinds of data and information all the time. Mm. Who's at fault here is British cybersecurity because we didn't stop this hack from occurring and allowed it to continue for, uh, for over a year. It's ridiculous. I never understand why they report it either. You know, if it, we're in a cold war. I know I said this earlier. I wasn't joking. We are in a cold war. And then we just appoint... Oh, I mean, you, we just did not do this when we were genuinely at war as well. Do you imagine You imagine during the 40s if, if the Times just reported all our failings in security? <laughs> It'd be ridiculous. So there's certain things I think we probably could keep to ourselves no matter who's in government. It all becomes very political because the idea of this is, you know, it's a, it's a Tory problem, therefore the Tories should fix it. When Labour come in, if it happens, we'll probably get it hushed up for a bit. But, look, we are in a... We are in uh, a Cold War, and we talk about these things regularly as if it's the first time it's ever happened. Look, China have always been our friends. China have pretended to be our friends for a long time, but they've always been on the other side of the Iron Curtain. Mm, I kind of wonder if we're doing the same over there and we just don't hear about it. And as you say, yeah, they've sort of called this out. Partly, apparently, it's to sort of name and shame them and attribute it in a very public way, but did mm. China actually care about that? They'll no. probably be like, yeah, yeah it was. Yeah. We yeah. are doing that. Yeah, so yeah. What? <laughs> I don't know. All right, that is it for part two. But coming up, <laughs> bullying, domestic violence and sheep shearing, all of those live in the studio. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, here's your latest weather update from the Met Office for GB News. We saw it quiet today weather-wise across the UK on Sunday, but things are turning more unsettled once again. During the week ahead, we wind and rain at times. A ridge of high pressure brought a quieter day on Sunday, but low pressure is already gathering towards the west and that will move in during the week ahead to return to unsettled conditions. 
Wind and rain already arriving across the west and southwest of the UK through the overnight period. Some of that rain turning quite heavy in places, whereas towards the north and east it's clearer, just one or two showers lingering, and certainly a touch of frost possible in the north and east by the early hours of Monday morning, whereas out towards the west and southwest those temperatures will start to climb. As for Monday itself, we'll have very wet days in store across some western and southwestern areas, particularly across the southwest of England. Some very heavy rain developing here at times. Whereas towards the north and east, it's a bright picture at least for a time before wind and rain starts to move in from the southwest, turning to snow as it reaches colder air across parts of Scotland, especially on the hills north of the central belt and particularly later on in the day. Temperatures peaking at 12 Celsius down towards the southeast, a bit colder though towards the north and northeast. As for Tuesday, what well, a very unsettled day is expected across Scotland. Rain and snow at times, snow chiefly on the hills, but some of that rain and some of that snow could be quite heavy. Elsewhere, it's a pretty unsettled day. Rain or showers never too far away. And those temperatures struggling, reaching uh, average figures at best, and staying pretty unsettled in the week ahead, with showers or longer spells of rain. And again, those temperatures struggling into the low double figures. 2024, a battleground year. The year the nation decides. As the parties gear up their campaigns for the next general election. Who will be left standing when the British people make one of the biggest decisions of their lives? Who will rise? And who will fall? Let's find out together. For every moment, the highs, the lows, the twists and turns. We'll be with you for every step of this journey. In 2024, GB News is Britain's election channel. I'm Christopher Hope. And I'm Gloria De Piero, bringing you PMQ's live here on GB News. Whenever Parliament is in session on a Wednesday at midday, we'll bring you live coverage of Prime Minister's questions. We'll be asking our viewers and listeners to submit the questions that they would like to put to the Prime Minister. And we'll put that to our panel of top politicians in our Westminster studio. That's PMQ's live here on GB News, Britain's election channel. GB News is the home of free speech. We were created to champion it, and we deliver it day in, day out. Free speech allows us all to explore and debate openly the issues most important to us, our families, and of course, the British people. Having challenging conversations to enlighten each other. Which is why we hear all sides of the argument. We are the people's channel. We will always stand by the freedom to express yourself. On TV, radio, and online. This is GB News, Britain's news channel. Welcome back to Headliners. Let's get straight into it with The Guardian. And bullies do prosper. Perhaps that explains the left's tactics over recent years, Paul. Mm -hmm. Well, might just do. Uh, playground bullies do prosper and go on to earn more in middle age. Uh, a five-decade UK study finds that aggression at school leads to better paying jobs, while those with emotional instability went on to earn less. I mean, it's evolution, isn't it? This is the survival of the fittest. I mean, we've spent many times, many years, should I say, f trying to force kindness on people and saying it's kindness that wins the day. And then they watch things like, you know, Dragon's Den or whatever it is. And it's not kindness that makes money. <laughs> yeah. it, is, it is brutality. It is desire. It's... It's just all these things, these bullies, I'm not saying that bullies are good, right? I was bullied, but when I realised that, you know, that's how you got money, I became the bully myself. You know, <laughs> I turned it around, you know, you've got to, you've got to learn, haven't you? It's an you've inspirational got to, story. You've got, to, you've got to take... Rags to riches. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So I started, you know, obviously picking on the girls much younger than me, because yeah. that, that was a lot easier. But, you know, I'm not... This story is supposed to say that bullies are bad, but they go on to win. Of course they do. Of course they do. It is a bit depressing. As a more sort of sensitive, you know, just good person, I do find a, a pity <laughs> that the bullies sort of win. This says, like, bullying and temper outbursts. Let's not mix those two together. No. Uh, temper outbursts <laughs> what you do when the bully pushes you too far <laughs> and you just kill everyone. It's victim um, blaming. Obviously, satirical content. And uh, gone, on, uh, Leo. Yeah, cos uh, you're, you're, you're fond of one of them. But, yeah, I just feel like, you know, we've had, for the last 20 years, we've been trying to eliminate bullying and schools and I think you know we're we're stopping the leaders of the future we're stopping those those people who would go on and become you know the, the alphas the Putins and, yeah yeah who do maybe not the Putins but I mean <laughs> no you I mean, yeah. he did have quite a gilded career uh, you know he's not his, his, his later you later stages aren't, aren't so great but yeah like Paul says it's nature's way and if you want people to succeed let, let all of our heroes were, were bullies and so Alex Ferguson football 
Probably a hero of yours. Mm -hmm. The hair dryer treatment, that wasn't him being kind and considerate. That's true, yeah. that's true. I mean, though that was, that was more of a, a temper outburst. But, yeah, <laughs> I mean, if you look at world leaders, you'd probably say Trump perhaps has the potential to be a bit of a bully. But if you look at Rishi and you say, not a bully, no. probably the one getting bullied. So maybe you do want a bully as a world leader. Maybe Rishi would be the friend of the bully. Telling him, you know, you always get that little yeah. guy. He's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know. get him. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. I doubt our, our, leader, our great leader would do that. Um, I don't mind. <laughs> our great leader. For another, like, ten What's days. Andrew Doyle got to do with um, it? Yeah, good point. Um, <laughs> I meant Mao. Um, all right, let's do the Times. And campaigners are trying to convince police Scotland that domestic abuse is on the same level as terrorism. Maybe they can get the hate monster on the case, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So campaigners uh, want police Scotland to create this dedicated task force to drive down abuse against women and girls, which is a, is a great idea. They've compared it to uh, terrorism, though, domestic violence to yeah. terrorism. But, uh, man, nobody's, like, beaten their spouse uh, to achieve the emancipation of uh, Biafra or, or, you know, <laughs> it's, you know, it's, it's an unrelated, it's an unrelated thing. Or, you know, you're not going to find yeah. out that your wife has actually been doing all this because she's a sleeper cell for, for ISIS. So this, this is silly. And also, it's going to be difficult. Um, it's going to be difficult to achieve, like, for a couple of reasons. One is that in, in police, in the, in the new law uh, in Scotland that was brought through the Hate Crime Act, uh, sex, biological sex, isn't recognised as a protected characteristic. Mm. So if somebody's being targeted because they're female, such as in domestic violence, then the police can't recognise that and see it as a contributing factor, which it seems absolutely ridiculous to me, given that you know women and girls are the major victims of that kind of violence. Can I just check you on that, though? Are they? Because I watched this film, I don't be controversial, I watched this film a while ago, The Red Pill, but I think it was Cassie J, wasn't it? And she went on this journey where she became, she was a feminist, then she sort of became a men's rights activist by the end of it. But in the film, it's like it said that actually men are quite often in quite high numbers, victims of domestic violence, but they don't have any shelters, no one's allowed to talk about it, you get shut but down. But to go back to the last story, you know, like some people get bullied and, oh. you know, you need to just toughen up. Okay. I'm if sorry. You're man, but you just take yeah, if you're a man, come on, you're a man, go lift some weights. Let's see. All right. Show her. Paul. <laughs> Anything more uh, sensible? Well, they, 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 I mean, it's a very, very serious subject. And not, all, all three of us here are aware of that. But they undermine their own argument every single time. All they try and do is lock it onto a phrase. What's more serious than domestic violence? Terrorism. And, but by doing so, they entirely undermine the thing they're trying to protect. And... I don't know why they do it. Just talk, just talk about domestic violence and, and talk about it in a way that everybody else feels like they can talk about it so we, all men don't feel like that they are the perpetrator of all domestic violence and just get us all involved. Don't tie it to terrorism. Yeah, and, and also... Concerned, sorry, just... Oh, go on. Well, yeah, just also the, the, the campaigners, they're bound to be these sort of blue-haired lefties who Can't insist be. on open borders and bring in <laughs> loads and loads of people from uh, the Middle East and, and places like that with uh, some pretty medieval attitudes to, to women. Right. So, you know, they're, they're sort of defeating their own purpose there. That's a good point, although it's allegedly coming from conser a Conservative MSP, but as we've seen, Conservatives often woke, Alicia Kearns is woke. Yeah, t I take back everything I just said. <laughs> I just made up but, an opinion based but, uh, on the headline. But um, you, know <laughs> you know what else? It's wrong. Right. What we're paid to do. <laughs> you know what else, though? <laughs> I mean, there is, I mean, it's a very serious topic, as you say. They also want co coercive behaviour to be put on a power of physical violence. I'm a bit worried about that, because anyone can get accused of that. Even, like, friends like, like Sean Walsh, when he was in that thing, he, he got accused of that, of and he obviously hadn't done it. No. So that can be abused, that's a very subjective term. The producer comes yeah. in during the break and uses co coercive behaviour. Coercive behaviour to get you to yeah. step your game up. Exactly. Yeah. All right. I, th well, I think the biggest thing would be uh, make housing cheaper so that people can afford to leave their partners, and it's easier to, to leave a, a bad situation. That's a good point. Let's do the telegraph. Now, with a story that reminds me of that old phrase, tune in, drop out and shear sheep, Paul. <laughs> that, old, that old phrase. Yeah, popular in the 60s. <laughs> the teenagers are ditching uni to become stonemasons, sheep shearers and fishermen. Now, this, this is primarily focusing on one person, which is uh, uh, Jen Zedder, uh, Katie Gardner from uh, Castle Douglas in Scotland. I'm not sure where that is in Scotland. Sounds lovely. I do. Oh, you, do you do? Is it nice? Oh, yeah, it's nice. Because it, it could be a council estate, couldn't it? Oh, well, it's bound to be a council estate, uh, but it's... That's also quite nice. Uh, uh, nothing wrong with the council estate, so I grew up on one, uh, just in case. Um, <laughs> it operates, uh, oper operates on a different uh, metric. But, but what she's saying here is that she, instead of going to uni and studying something ridiculous, she gets to shear sheep for £1.20 per sheep. Now, that's fine if you're a teenager and you've got no bills to pay and all yeah. you want to buy is vape and new blue hair dye, but... If you if you literally have to pay bills and and put shelter over your over, over your head, it, that's not going to work. But I don't think the answer's gone. You can shear a sheep very quickly. 
You've got to shear a lot of sheep, though. 422 in a day. That was her record. (laughs) She said she would describe it as a bug. I always thought I'd stop once I'd shorn 100 sheep, but then then 300, but I kept going. I just can't get enough of shearing sheep. It's It's quite a good job if you like sheep. You have to. That's almost really, like you, you kind of have the main to. Criteria. You can't be allergic to sheep or yeah. have any sort of revulsion uh, phobia. Well, unless you just hate them, like oh, you want to get rid of like. You're <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I, think, I think we're seeing this across the across the West. You know, so many people. We're told, like my my generation. My dad told me. My dad's a gunsmith. Works with his hands. You know, real you know skillful guy. He, I was like, oh, dad, teach me how to make guns. Teach me how to fix guns and stuff. And he said, no, no, no. Uh, you're going to go to university. You're going to get a degree. You're going to leave behind this. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. this this comfortable sort of. Uh, uh, Workman's tradesman's existence, and instead, you know, I got a degree and, and earned no money whatsoever. No money. And now you're it... talking about sheep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Instead of doing it, you'll be out there sharing. <laughs> I know it, it, modernity has failed us. I mean, it, it's failed to fulfil people. They're struggling ep- economically. They've got these pointless degrees. This seems inevitable. People will go back to these kind of jobs. Yeah. Maybe that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. It, it does seem. Uh, you can't tell from this article, but it does seem maybe she's overprivileged in some way. <laughs> OK, well, let's move on and do the Telegraph and the rampant anti-white racism within the Church of England, Leo. Oh, this is insane. So a Church of England archdeacon has called for anti-whiteness in comments that have been criticised as divisive. I mean, just a bit. You know what I mean? <laughs> Open racism from a, from a clergy woman. Uh, so Dr Threlful Holmes, Miranda Threlful Holmes, uh, wrote on Twitter, I went to a conference on whiteness last autumn. It was very good, very interesting, and it made me realise whiteness is to race as patriarchy is to gender. Yeah. So, a good thing then. So, <laughs> yes, let's have anti-whiteness and let's smash the patriarchy. That's not anti-white or anti-men, it's anti-oppression. So, she's saying anti-whiteness isn't anti-white. I mean, <laughs> there's a bit of a clue there as to whether it's anti-white or not. It's ridiculous. And uh, it's, uh, you know, if you can go to a conference, like spend a day at a conference and come out, you know, after listening to somebody talk with a PowerPoint and come out completely racist and uh, anti-white, then, like, man, the Nazis needed more indoctrination (laughs) than that before... I was going to say, no one show her a Hitler documentary. She's just (laughs) brainwashed by the latest ideology. These people are so stupid that they... The way she talks about it, right, she says, I do understand, I do understand this is not a definition that is widely shared as yet outside of academic circles. Are you joking? It's been shared for the last 10 years, constantly in our faces. We're not new to... They're not... We're not blowing our minds with these woke ideas. They're just stupid ideas that we can see through. Really dumb people learn something and they go and they go to like some woke course and they go, oh, this is the truth. And it's like apply your critical thinking. Yeah, skill. yeah. As someone says here, lead by example and resign, which is quite a funny suggestion. And someone else says you've given up Christianity to join a new and sinister cult. Isn't that what's happening, Paul? They've given up, uh, you yeah. know, teaching the theology of Christianity to just preach woke ideology. They've become useful idiots. The very right. epitome of useful idiots. Unfortunately, it's grim stuff. It is racism. It's racism in its purest sense. It's discriminating against someone on the basis of their skin colour. Mm. And we obviously they've been taught in the same PowerPoint that you can't be racist against white people. Well, that, that's right. step one. And then they teach steps two to 400 are how to be racist against white people. And I, I often wonder, who do they think they're appeasing? Who's their audience? Who are they speaking to? Yeah. yeah. Because none of us, we all know, we all know people, different people of colour. And they're not, no, I don't know anyone who's asking for this stuff. Yeah. Well, it is making me think about becoming a pagan. But uh, <laughs> let's do the mail. And it sounds like the Soho Theatre is not a safe space for white people, Paul. No. <laughs> Certainly not. Theatre theater tells white audience members attending Arts Council funded venue to check their privilege at the door. Soho Theatre once again, and it's in the capital's West End, capital being London, of course, uh, made the instruction to comedy fans, in inverted commas, and it is no inverted commas, uh, ahead <laughs> of a Femmes of Colour comedy club, which Leo and I try to get on the bill for, but uh, <laughs> uh, for whatever reason they didn't accept our video. Performance at the theatre on the 25th of March. Now, uh, Soho Theatre, unwittingly or wittingly, seems to have become sort of what comedy, you know, what for comedy, what Nuremberg was for sort so, so, for, for the Nazis. I can't even get the I can't even get it out. They, 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 the Soho Theatre has become the Nuremberg of London because they don't. That, it, it, it is the place you go to preach any hate. Yeah. You know, because you can't you can't get away with your standard hate, the sort of hate that might be labelled towards us. But you can get away with some pretty creative hate at the Soho Theatre. I see. Yeah, I mean, but. 
by the way, which white people would even be going to this? I mean, imagine the self-loathing. Oh, there, there are cheaper places in Soho you can be humiliated. I don't, you know know if, what I, mean? I don't know if you've met white people in London, but they're oh. all full of self-loathing right. and, you know, want to destroy... They, they, they want to abolish whiteness. This is why people, you know, are going on these diversity courses and stuff, and yeah. it's, it's, it's spread by it's spread by, by white people, this, this stuff. But, yeah, it's funded by the Arts Council. They, I think they receive over 700 grand a year, this theatre. And, man, why, why are white people being taxed? To pay, yeah, to be told that they're horrible. Six hundred fourteen thousand, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. It's incredible. And also, poor Curry. He had that incident there where yeah. he told the person who was anti-Israel to get out, and it was a big thing. They put out a quite a tepid statement at first, quite weak, and then they put out a more strong one. Then I was saying, oh, he could never come back. Will the same happen for this? No. <laughs> Question mark. Absolutely no way. I guarantee you, no, no yeah. way at all. All right. Okay. That is part three smashed. But coming up in the final section, why blacklisting is a racist term. The man who lost a fortune in Bitcoin and night. Nike's continued attempt to destroy their brand. See you in a minute. <laughs> Good afternoon, Britain. Weekdays from midday. Now, reports suggest that Boris Johnson could make a general election comeback for the Tories, with the former Prime Minister expected to campaign for the Conservatives in red wall seats, although not stand in one himself. Yes, he wants to take the fight to Keir Starmer. So, GB News East Midlands reporter Will Hollis has been in Bassett Law asking locals whether they want to see Boris make a comeback. I actually used to like Boris Johnson, but he let me down with Covid, and so, therefore, I, w I won't be voting Conservative anymore. I did do, but not anymore. Not for me and anybody else here, because from, all, from, from day one, he's been a liar all along. Don't vote for him. Stick with Labour. I like Boris Johnson, to be honest with you, and I think it could do a boost for Conservatives. I've always been a Labour voter, Miss Enlight, but uh, no, I went to Conservative. Personally, not for me, no, no. He's, done, he's not done anything to make any arrangements to make this town better. When he was in charge of the Conservative Party, all he thought about was the upper class, not the working class, because he was telling everybody to stay at home during COVID, and what did he do? He had an house party. Well, there you go, the views of the people of Bassett Law. Not well, so I mean, keen He was overall. telling people to stay at home. He did, there's no suggestion he didn't stay at home. Well, no, but I guess there's uh, mixed reviews on whether Boris Johnson to make a comeback. I guess the idea is that he'll appeal to Red Wall voters far more than Rishi Sunak, so if they can use him up there, then uh, maybe he'll help them out. And Although I think they want to get David Cameron to uh, campaign in the, uh, in the Blue Wall, in the Shires, because he goes down well there. Allies of Boris Johnson have been pouring cold water on this report, of course. Nadine Dorries tweeting earlier today that uh, Rishi and Boris actually haven't spoken in the last year. Mm. I think the most exciting bit for me is talking to people. People who I think are ignored often by the major news channels, we're going to give news they want to hear. There's a voice there that needs to be heard. I think there's a chance here for a diversity of opinion to be expressed, which you don't find elsewhere. It's really exciting. We don't hold back. We're free to say how decisions that are taken here affect us all around the country. Only on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Michelle Jubery, and I'm not here to tell you what to think. I'd much rather hear what you have to say. So, send in your opinions to gbviews at gbnews.com. Keep them clean, and you never know, I might read them out. With my panel here on Jubes & Co, we debate, we get stuck into the issues of the day on a show where all views are welcome, especially yours. GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. Welcome back to the final section of Headliners. Let's get straight into it with the mail. And is defunding the police turning out to be a flawed idea after all, Leo? Oh, this is, you're going to love this story. So the uh, students at this far-left university in California, so Berkeley, Berkeley, whatever it's called, uh, the parents have, be, have been forced to, uh, to spend $40,000 to hire private security guards to protect the students near the campus. This is after the students pushed to defund the police and the city cut $9.2 million from its cop budget 
who'd have thought? <laughs> who'd have thought that that led to a rise in violent crime and the students that that wanted the you know that thought that ACAB and you know the police should be defunded all of a sudden weren't safe anymore. So and this is being this is being played out across America. There's been a surge in violence across America, particularly you're going to love this in left wing communities where uh, where they've defunded the police the hardest. So yeah, why do they do? Because the people who protest for this stuff they just make themselves less safe at the end of the day. Yeah. It's kind of like gun laws. People say, oh, we're going to get rid of the guns. But then who has the guns? Well, just rich people who can afford private security, as we see with this, Gompo. Yeah, I mean, if you suspend reality long enough, it will come back and punch you in the face. Reality <laughs> is right wing. A great man yeah. said that recently on this show. It, yeah, absolutely. It was, <laughs> it was you. You were that great man. I think I might have even been on that show. But uh, reality has become right wing, which is hilarious, because there's a lot of people who quite like reality mm -hmm. that would hate to be described as right wing. Yeah. None of us, of course, we love it. We're, we're far reality. But... Um... <laughs> hey, just how it is. Life finds away but uh, look, of course it happened you know there is a reason for police there's a reason for laws there's a reason why the ten commandments was a thing yeah, there's, the, the history has shown us why we do need parameters within society yeah. and we need people to manage those parameters although interesting we didn't have police until they were set up in what was it the 1800s or something we didn't have, have an official police force we just had vigilante mobs which actually sounds like a much better yeah. idea simpler times but okay. young people don't have enough testosterone now to, uh, to be, do that's, that that's the one flaw in that idea Let's do the uh, telegram. And the term blacklisted is racist, according to spies. I thought the whole point of spies was that we didn't have to hear from them, Paul. <laughs> well, they, I mean, wait till you find out what these uh, spies are like. Uh, the term blacklisted is racist. It's not, by the way. But US warns <laughs> it's spies. US spies, including members of the CIA, have been told the term blacklisted is racist in an internal diversity newsletter. What a read that must be. Which also <laughs> offered advice from from a cross-dresser. Now, I don't know <laughs> how relevant that is. I cannot find throughout the story why they've mentioned the fact that the person giving the advice was a cross-dresser or why they told him. You might have the information. Oh, man, so, yeah, so this, this guy <laughs> cross-dresses, he, uh, he, he wrote about how cross-dressing improved his intelligence. He says, <laughs> I am an intelligence officer and I'm a man who likes to wear women's clothes sometimes. I think my experiences as someone who cross-dresses have sharpened the skills I use as an intelligence officer, particularly critical thinking and perspective taking. Well, that's nonsense. Sure, do it. It's you know, yeah, yeah. fine, absolutely we, fine. We but like, yeah, I'm like, we're, <laughs> we're in uh, chiffon <laughs> panties right now, right up my. Uh, but the, it's a very but broad definition see, of the word intelligence set, gone. Yeah, but to see, see, this is like me being like, oh, yeah, so uh, if you keep gerbils, then you get an insight into <laughs> intelligence. And it's like, no, it's completely unrelated. Right. I mean, I hope we're just feigning weakness for China, but I'm worried that this is actually the state we of the intelligence <laughs> service <laughs> and the US. Let's do the Times. And the Freemasons are modernizing, more focus on recruiting young people and less on weird handshakes, Leo. Yeah, so the Freemasons. Masons are ripping up the rule book to get a grip on Gen Z and, and appeal to younger people. So the minimum age has gone down uh, to, to 21, um, and they're also they're going to make uh, they're going to make the um, all these thick books on lore's rules and rituals have now been digitised to make it easier for newcomers. I don't know if you've ever heard of me, whose dad's in the in the Freemasons. I'd, growing up in Scotland, like I had a same yeah. couple. Cumbria, they're we're, all in them. Yeah, we're always we're always <laughs> saying, oh, get the you know get the book. What in it, it's got. We thought it was like devil spells and yeah. all this sort of stuff, and it's, it's not. It's no. much. It's no, just admin. It's, it's, yeah, yeah. Now it's all searchable online. But it's not very clandestine, is yeah, it? Yeah. Now it removes all the all the fun. It yeah, removes yeah. the Harry Potter stuff. Yeah. I mean, I think they've actually reduced the age to 18 for, from 21. And and the point, the reason I say that is because the whole point, surely, of the Masons is is to network, share skills, and influence. What 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 network and skills and influence have you got at 18? Good point. Let's very quickly <laughs> do the Express. And apparently, Nike were considering an even worse England shirt than the one they released. They should probably change their slogan to just don't do it, Paul. Exactly. N Nike, nuke. Uh, <laughs> Nike. <laughs> no, we don't have time to go with that. <laughs> Nike drew up plans uh, for Rainbow England kit to take, <laughs> to take shirt to drastic new levels. And Nike reportedly drew up plans to, to basically make, on, on the back of the fact that they changed the St George's Cross uh, to, to add purple and orange and yellow for, for, no, um, uh, for reasons nobody knows, they were going to make a rainbow kit. And of course they were, Nick. Yeah. They're trolling us. This yeah. is one well, great big troll. And also, I think we know the pride flag is basically the flag for the entire Western civilization. Right yeah, now. yeah. And this proves that it was woke. People are saying, was that the real motivation? You know, then that just proves it was woke, but they just got talked out of being extra woke, but still quite woke. Mm. OK, well, we all hate that flag. All right, thanks, lads. That is the show pretty much over. So let's have another quick look at Monday's front pages. So The Times has... Russell Group gets most of its fees from overseas, which we covered earlier. The Telegraph, China and Russia behind slurs on Princess. 
The Guardian has suspects for appearing court accused of Moscow attack that left 137 dead. The Sun, China hack attack on UK. The I News, UK's nuclear defence boost to protect against Putin. And finally, the Daily Star joins the gold rush. We don't know what that means yet. But those are the front pages, so that is it for tonight's show. Thanks to Leo and Paul. Headlines is back tomorrow at 11pm. There they are. And if you're watching at 5am, then stay tuned for breakfast. But for now, it's good night or indeed good morning and God bless. warm feeling inside from boxed boilers sponsors of weather on gb news hello here's your latest weather update from the met office for gb news we saw it quiet today weather wise across the uk on sunday but things are turning more unsettled once again during the week ahead with wind and rain at times a ridge of high pressure brought a quieter day on sunday but low pressure is already gathering towards the west and that will move in during the week ahead to return to unsettled conditions Wind and rain already arriving across the west and southwest of the UK through the overnight period. Some of the rain turning quite heavy in places, whereas towards the north and east it's clearer, just one or two showers lingering, and certainly a touch of frost possible in the north and east by the early hours of Monday morning, whereas out towards the west and southwest those temperatures will start to climb. As for Monday itself, with a very wet days in store across some western and southwestern areas, particularly across the southwest of England, some very heavy rain developing here at times. Whereas towards the north and east, it's a bright picture at least for time before wind and rain starts to move in from the southwest, turning to snow as it reaches colder air across parts of Scotland, especially on the hills north of the central belt and particularly later on in the day. Temperatures peaking at 12 Celsius down towards the southeast, a bit colder though towards the north and northeast. As for Tuesday, well, a very unsettled day is expected across Scotland. Rain and snow at times, snow chiefly on the hills, but some of that rain and some of that snow could be quite heavy. Elsewhere, it's a pretty unsettled day. Rain or showers never too far away. And those temperatures struggling, reaching uh, average figures at best, and staying pretty unsettled in the week ahead, with showers or longer spells of rain. And again, those temperatures struggling into the low double figures. A brighter outlook with Box Solar. Sponsors of weather on GB News. is ticking on your chance to win the Great British Giveaway. There's a massive £12,345 in tax-free cash to spend however you like, along with £500 in shopping vouchers for your favourite store, a games console, a pizza oven and a portable Sonos smart speaker. And the best news? You could be our next big winner just like Phil. Didn't quite believe it and still can't. Uh, and if I can win it, anybody can win it. For another chance to win the vouchers, the treats and £12,345 in tax-free cash, text GBWIN to 84902. Text costs £2 plus one standard network rate message. Or post your name and number to GB03 PO Box 8690 Derby DE1 9 T. UK only. Entrance must be 18 or over. Lines close at 5pm on Friday the 29th of March. Full terms and Privacy notice at gbnews.com forward slash win. Please check the closing time if watching or listening on demand. Good luck. 2024, a battleground year. The year the nation decides. As the parties gear up their campaigns for the next general election. Who will be left standing when the British people make one of the biggest decisions of their lives? Who will rise? And who will fall? Let's find out together. For every moment, the highs, the lows, the twists and turns. We'll be with you for every step of this journey. In 2024, GB News is Britain's election channel. Big news, big debates, big opinion. Patrick Christie's tonight is the week's biggest show. Every weekday, 9 to 11 p.m., we've got the inside track on the day's top stories. There'll be sharp takes you won't get anywhere else. We will set the news agenda, not just follow it, and I want to bring you along for the ride. Whatever it is, we'll have our finger on the pulse. It's news, but it's this close to entertainment. Patrick Christie's tonight, 9 to 11 p.m., only on GB News, the people's channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Christopher Hope. And I'm Gloria De Piero, bringing you PMQ's live here on GB News. Whenever Parliament is in session on a Wednesday at midday, we'll bring you live coverage of Prime Minister's questions. We'll be asking our viewers and listeners to submit the questions that they would like to put to the Prime Minister, and we'll put that to our panel of top politicians in our Westminster studio. That's PMQ's live here on GB News, Britain's election channel. 
Good afternoon, Britain. Good afternoon, Britain. Weekdays from midday, we bring you the most compelling stories from across the United Kingdom. And why it matters to you. From your doorstep to our inbox. That's right, we want to hear from you. Good afternoon, Britain. Only on GB News, the People's Channel, Britain's news channel. I'm Martin Daubney. This is GB News, Britain's news channel. Very good evening to you. I'm Sam Francis in the GB newsroom, 7 o'clock, and a quick recap of the headlines this hour. Russia's Black Sea fleet is now functionally inactive, according to the UK's Defence Secretary. That's after a massive Ukrainian missile strike on Sevastopol. For those watching on television, this was the moment the two Russian Navy vessels were targeted and then struck. <laughs> sources have told GB News that UK-supplied Storm Shadow missiles were used in that strike. And we understand a major military communication centre was also damaged. It marks the largest attack on the Russian-controlled port in the war so far, as tensions in the region continue to escalate. Meanwhile, four suspects have been taken into Russia's investigative committee headquarters today following Friday's terror attack in Moscow. The Islamic State group has claimed responsibility for the shooting, which we now know has killed at least 130 people. The US, meanwhile, has backed that claim, but Russia is continuing to suggest that Ukraine was involved, allegations that Kyiv has denied. And we've heard tonight that a boy aged just 12 years old has been charged with attempted murder after a teenage girl was stabbed in Kent. The incident happened in Sittingbourne shortly before four o'clock on Friday afternoon. The victim, we understand, was taken to a hospital in London to re receive treatment. She is now, though, in a stable condition. The boy, who cannot be named for legal reasons, will appear in court on Monday. In other news, Simon Harris has been confirmed as the new leader of the Fianna Gael party, paving the way for him to become Ireland's youngest premier. It follows the surprise resignation of Leo Varadkar on Wednesday of this week for what he described as personal and political reasons. Mr Harris is expected to become Ireland's youngest Taoiseach after the Easter recess. He said today that politics should be a force for good. Hope. Enterprise. Equality of opportunity integrity and security. I have been in this party since I was 15 years old and those values mean and meant everything to me because I believe in public service. I believe in the power of politics to make a difference. I believe that politics as a profession can make people's lives better. In London, the British Museum was forced to close today as hundreds of pro-Palestine and environmental protesters gathered outside. Activists were seen waving banners and Palestinian flags and shouting, hands off the Middle East. The group calling itself the Energy Embargo for Palestine say they will keep targeting the museum until it ends its £50 million partnership with the oil giant BP. Eight people have been rescued after their fishing boat sank off the coast of Shetland, triggering a major rescue effort. A lifeboat and two helicopters, one from Norway, were scrambled to the scene after the 27-metre vessel activated its distress beacon early this morning. It had started taking on water in rough seas and sank within a matter of minutes. The early morning call-out did save all the crew on board who were safely airlifted from their life rafts and we understand they are reported to be in a good condition. And finally, fast food was given a new meaning in Paris today as cafe staff took part in a traditional waiter's race. The famous challenge returned this afternoon after a 13-year break. Around 200 waiters raced through the city streets, carefully balancing a tray with a pastry, a cup of coffee and a glass of tap water on board. It was first held in 1914 and even today the running waiters are still expected to dress for the occasion. This year's winners went home with a complimentary meal and tickets to the Paris Olympics. Those are the headlines. I'll be back in the next hour. In the meantime, you can sign up to GB News Alerts. Just scan the QR code there on your screen.